We've all heard the term routine vaccines. Those are vaccines that we typically get as kids. And with all the attention on the COVID vaccine, we haven't heard a lot about these routine vaccines. And normally that would be fine because they are meant to be sort of routine, boring shots for diseases you've never heard of because the shots effectively have eliminated them. But these things are changing. Many of the diseases that these routine vaccines have protected us from are making a comeback. And with all the disruptions caused by the pandemic, that problem may get worse before it gets better. And two of the big ones are measles and mumps. So let's get into it. Measles is a virus, and as it turns out, it's one of the most contagious viruses ever known to mankind, even more contagious than COVID. Nine out of 10 people exposed to this virus for the first time will get the infection. It was first described over a thousand years ago, and before vaccines became available, this was a very common infection. About a half million Americans would catch measles every year, and about 500 Americans would die of it every year. Globally, there would be over 2 million deaths from measles every single year. So this was a really big deal. And it would typically affect kids, and it would cause symptoms of your basic viral illness. So fever, body aches, cough, runny nose, often red eyes or conjunctivitis. And what was somewhat unique about it is that it would also cause a red rash about two weeks after the initial infection, and eventually that rash would affect the whole body. And most people would get over this, but some people would develop complications. And those complications included things like pneumonia, which could be fatal, and encephalitis or inflammation of the brain, which could also be fatal or could cause long-term consequences like blindness or deafness. There was also a very specific measles complication called subacute sclerosing panencephalitis or SSPE, which is a degenerative condition of the neurological system, which causes abnormal brain development and complications like seizures, usually seven to 10 years after that initial measles infection. So this is something that children died of every single year. Then in 1963, all of that changed. That's when the measles vaccine was developed. And soon after that, it was administered to kids around the world. And the effects were dramatic. So the shot is initially given at around the age of one. Then a second dose is given around the age of five. And the protection from those two doses is 97%. So cases, complications from measles, deaths, all of that started to drop dramatically. In the US, cases went from over three in a thousand in the 1950s to just over one in a hundred thousand by the 1980s. It's estimated that between 2000 and 2022, measles vaccination prevented 57 million deaths around the world. And in some parts of the world, measles was effectively eradicated. Canada eliminated measles in 1998 and the US did it in 2000. At that point, it actually looked possible to wipe this disease off the face of the planet. But then something unexpected happened measles made a comeback. And the reason? Anti-vaccine sentiment started increasing, and as a result, there were gaps in vaccine coverage. And because this is such a contagious virus, it's estimated that 95% population immunity is needed to prevent spread. So even a small number of people not getting the vaccine, especially if they're clustered together, creates the conditions for an outbreak. This is what happened in 2015, where you might recall there was actually a measles outbreak at Disney World. And this is what measles case numbers have looked like recently in the US. So 2019 was obviously a really bad year and that was driven by a series of outbreaks in communities that don't believe in vaccination. And it was a big step back for the country. The last time the US had that high a measles rate was all the way back in 1992. If you're wondering how long ago that was, it's the year that this song was on top of the billboard charts. I like big butts and I cannot lie. You other brothers can't deny. That's not my favorite song. I'm just saying. Now it's mostly unvaccinated people who get sick in these outbreaks, but some vaccinated people will get it too, particularly if they're susceptible because they have a weak immune system. And it isn't just kids anymore. Since the year 2000, about 40% of measles cases in the US have been in adults, and one quarter were in people aged 20 to 29. And complications like encephalitis are unfortunately more common in adults. And then came the pandemic. So a lot of kids stayed home from school, they had poor access to healthcare, and they basically missed their vaccines. As a result of that, between 2021 and 2022, there was an 18% increase in measles cases, all the way up to 9 million cases around the world, and a 43% increase in measles deaths, reaching 136,000 deaths. 37 different countries had major measles outbreaks. So if you thought measles was a thing of the past, it's time to start paying attention again. But measles isn't the only virus making a comeback. Let's talk about mumps. 
Mumps is a virus that loves our salivary glands. It causes swelling in one or more of these glands that make our saliva, and especially the glands situated right at the angles of our jaw on both sides, which is called the parotid gland. Now the infection starts like any virus. It has typical sort of non-specific symptoms like fever, headache, muscle aches. And if the parotid glands get swollen, then it becomes obvious that it's mumps and you get that classic puffy cheek look. But there are certain complications which make it much more serious. And unfortunately those complications are also more common in adults. In males, up to 30% can get swelling of the testicles, which can decrease fertility. And up to about 10% of people can get meningitis or encephalitis. Mumps can also lead to deafness. In fact, before the mumps vaccine, mumps was the most common cause of deafness in children. And like most viruses, there's no specific treatment for it. Now, the reason you haven't heard of mumps is that, again, like many of these ancient diseases, it nearly vanished once a vaccine became available. The mumps vaccine was introduced in Canada in the late 1960s, and infections initially dropped by over 90% in the next few years. That protection from a single dose of the vaccine is between 60 to 90%, so eventually they started administering two doses, which protects somewhere between 75 and 95%. And ultimately, cases have come way down. There were over 50,000 cases of mumps a year in Canada before the vaccines, and that came all the way down to a low of 28 cases in 2003, which is a drop of more than 99.9%. But it's not completely gone. We still see mumps outbreaks. And the tricky thing with mumps is that about 15 to 20% of people don't develop any symptoms at all. Another 20 to 30% of people just get symptoms of a cold and they don't realize it's the mumps. And only about 50% will get that typical parotid swelling. And it's highly contagious. It spreads through respiratory droplets, through direct contact, even through inanimate objects where the virus can survive. And people can start spreading the virus several days before they actually have symptoms. So putting all that together, mumps outbreaks can progress really quickly before people realize what's happening. And because of that, there are still occasional outbreaks in places like schools, summer camps, college dorms, and even workplaces. Which brings us to the NHL. So National Hockey League players, like in any sports league, spend a lot of time together. They're often in enclosed spaces together, they're in close contact with one another, they may even share, for example, a water bottle sometimes which is why in 2014, there was a major mumps outbreak in the NHL. It hit six different teams, two dozen players, and even some of the refs. And the face of that outbreak was Sidney Crosby. So you might remember this picture of him with his right parotid gland, basically the size of a golf ball, and now you know why. Now these outbreaks mostly affect unvaccinated people, but again, some vaccinated people do get infected as well. In this case, because it only became standard practice to give two doses of the vaccine after 1996, most of those NHL players had only actually gotten one dose because they were born before that, which is why they were more susceptible. So most people don't know much about measles and mumps, and we'd like to keep it that way. These are viruses that shouldn't still be around, but they are. And because some people haven't kept up with their routine vaccines, they are making a comeback. But the solution is easy. In the early 1970s, the measles and mumps vaccines were packaged into a single vaccine called the MMR vaccine. And that stands for measles, mumps, and rubella, which is another ancient virus. And as of 2005, they added the varicella vaccine in to make the combined MMRV vaccine, which basically means that with one vaccine dose plus a booster, you are effectively protected against all four of these viruses. And because they've been around for so long and billions of people around the world have gotten them, we not only know that these vaccines are very effective, but they are also extremely safe. So if you or your child haven't had your MMR or MMRV vaccine, talk to your doctor because you need it. Stay tuned for our second installment of Ancient Diseases Making a Comeback. And for all things health and science, subscribe to the feed.